Greetings everyone, and great here for another H Powers 3 replay. Spawn on the north side as the blue Sioux. We have Prey before play. Spawn on the south side as the red Asua. We have Vindian. Let's see now that I see some natives on the map. We got the native Habsburgs. They must have from some funny faces. They do have mounted infantry, which I always find it weird. On, they are a skirmish unit, but when they're on cavalry, they are heavy range cavalry. A very unique type. We have, when they dismount, they are not a musketeer variant, but a skirmisher variant. So why do they have the heavy range cavalry sub uh, typing? I do not know. And line infantry, a musketeer. And for the other one, we do have the House of Yegalon. We do have access to the Lipkar Tatars and the Shock Rider. And some of you remember as well, balance of power, equalize your resources could be useful if you really focus on one resource. You can equalize it and turn to other resources. How does the influence affect influence? Does it equalize to go along with influence? Does it withdraw influence? It probably won't affect export. If it does affect export, that could be a good way to increase your export. I don't know. Does anybody know if it if affects influence and or export? I assume not influence, but I really don't know about X or I assume not export, but I'm do have no idea about influence. It could or it couldn't. So yeah, it can't <laughs> You have a ship available for the Sioux. And now bring in some villagers. Oge Tanka Un makes a war chief deadly in combat. His ore now also improves her unit siege of damage. So, not bad. Furrier. I know this as well. For some other reason, I had never seen another game where this actually granted sources uh, into directing your stockpile. I never know how that happened. There's a Spanish player. Food, wood. Going Sutton Bowman, Axe Riders, Lehman Trade Muskets, turn your Axe Riders into Rifle Riders, and Rifle Riders, in my opinion, maybe a little bit uh, overpowered. Cavalry Damage, Great Hunter, Bison, more Villagers Wood, Wakanda Rifles, Cavalry Combat, Rifle Riders, Tokala Dog Soldiers, Earth Bounty, Santi Support, Yankton Support, North American Trade. Seven Council Fire. Have you pronounced that name? Akitshia and Dakota Support. And for the Husua, who is going for the Husua? Uh, we've got the Chief here, which I believe increases War Chief uh, health and damage. We've got infinite four semi fattened cattle. Also, give him access to one cattle. The semi fattened cattle it has 100 additional food, while the extra cattle does not. Kukula Code, Wood Coin, Influence, Blani Archers, Riders, Zu Zazu Cavalry, ships one Living Knight per palace and one Raider per war camp. And we've got University of Timbuktu. Palace of Mina Gassian uh, gives you access to Aken Nobles. Enables them and makes them non basically non native. Berber allies. They're Berbers. Ships a uh, Berber nomad villager for each trading post in towns that you control. Ukuana, have you pronounced that? Ships uh, villagers on Girats, wood or gold influence. Living knight. Emir of Kano gives you another hero. Uh, Ajadi Emirate. Uh, Sahalian Kingdoms, Mansa Masina Madrasas, which are like, I think that's another name for university. That's also a name I butcher in Age of Empires 4, Berber Allies, Focus Influence, Ubar Parade, and War Fortifications. Got Axe Riders and some Raiders not being pulled on the out. Relatively equal. Big Riders are, of course, a, a lighter cavalry unit. Axe Riders, I think, are a bit more of a standard one. Let's see. Matcha. 35 damage, so 
Liv actually punches a little bit harder than Hazar's, a little less health than Hazar's, and actually do less damage versus Dragoons. And these Raiders are do a lot less damage, a lot less health. They're definitely half of Hazar. Uh, Axe Riders push way forward. Gotta be a bit careful. It does save us War Chief from going down. These guys are influenced by the War Chief Orc. You may just want to keep the War Chief nearby, but not engaging. The Axe Riders are simply here not in enough numbers, so he will lose a couple of his Axe Riders now. Got a shipment of wood here. The War Chief does go down. That is a good number of riders. He needs to get out something. Cavalry archers, the bull riders, I think they're called, would be a good item since these guys are heavy cap. Some of these villagers getting hit. He does take out one of those units now. And the last axe rider does go down. Does get a shipment of bow riders or a deployment of bow riders and upload a field. They do bow and sand versus heavy cav. And they do also have good base sand versus, uh as well, so they can put holes in these uh, lighter raiders, no problem. They do have some Fulani archers. Fulani archers would be a good item to counter them, but they're in great now in some low numbers. We will pick off two of them. More Fulani archers now upload in the field. He will need to get out more axe riders. They will support his bow riders. He's going for more bow riders now. Now he's signing for a war hut here. The war hut's getting torched down and will get torched down. And now he even got some Jalen Riders as well, which will be a counter to the Axe Riders that he may deploy on out. He's trying to go over Shim of Seven Bowmen, which is not going to be that useful. Also, Mina has been pulled out of the field. He's now going for another War Hut. He has no he has really no resources at the moment. I go for two war huts to waterways against his opponent, but for right now it will take a bit of time to blow on out. He's starting to torch down the corral. Now it does have a shipment of these bowmen on point of field, which will do less damage versus the cavalry. But they will be at least decent versus the uh, Fulani archers. Bow riders trying to hit the Fulani archers now, a couple of them do go down. Right, now the riders now. He does get the war camp there. He needs to get these villages inside the war camp immediately. Some of these villages are still going down. Riders are slowly being cleaned on up. A couple of flaws on the arch now push way forward. And right now the Sioux are down to 18 villagers, six of which are idols. One has 18 as well. And so, which he's just been spending all of his extra food on military units, not on villagers. We have some Berber camel riders not being plotted a few, which I believe are a Sawar variant, where they do bonus damage versus infantry, but less damage versus heavy infantry. Hunting doggos have been pulled in the field, or village doggos. Now I am for snares. More Fulani archers not being pulled on the field. Shimmer food being brought on in. I see Berber camel riders. Actually, no, I was completely wrong. They do bone sand versus cavalry. A uh, little bit of damage versus shock. Is a hand shock or just shock? Yeah, just shock in general. You do bone damage versus uh, artillery and less damage versus light art, light infantry and villagers. Oh, this one's not playing on any 
Well, it does have a handful of bowmen, but they're here in low numbers. Shouldn't make too big a difference. More bow riders being employed on out. Burmore Cavalry Riders will do bonus damage versus the Cavalry, so going for Axe Riders at this point in time will not be ideal. Right, that's a decent amount of archers now. <sighs> now we've got the Gossina, ship the number of Aken Kenobles, Musketeers, Heavy Musketeers, enables them to be trained at war camps where they cost food, population, coin, makes it into a standard unit rather than to a native unit. Do they still retain the native tag? Yes, they do. So there's some benefits and improved native units, which could be useful. And yep, they do have a wood or uh, food cost. Uh, not a food cost. They don't have a wood cost there, though. I thought I saw one of those indications there that says it requires wood. Ooh, good cheese, 80 food. Got a very sizable armor here, 41 military units. His opponent has an army 23. He does have the war chief alive. Not all the way healed up, however. And down south, do have. Oh, a converted unit getting killed off right there. And now that Marauding Musketeer does go down, he can go ahead and look through those stones to find 50 coin. Right now, Sue does have a decent amount of resource stockpiled up. The Husua has even more. He's eyeing to age up. We do have the Equalize ability here. He can utilize. He does also have access to both natives. Or he's going for both natives, I should say. Right now, he does have access to the Lipkar Tatars and the Shock Riders. Who's trying to fancy up for forward. It may not go too well. We got some Gearots tooting their horns as well. And now the Hasua can age up. They're going for the Moroccans. And the Sioux are not on the age up. They do have a good amount of gold sword up the moment. Needs a lot more food. Camp going on up. A little bit past the moment. It's probably going to come down to one final engagement. But it feels like the Masuba's in a good position. We do have an army of 38 here versus an army of 46. And so we have an age advantage, which could get some uh, veteran upgrades. Now we do have the Great Hunter. Okay, that gives you resources as a as well as more food collection, useful. Though the amount of, uh, okay, he doesn't have any axe, only have a handful of axe riders, so it's going for the demon trade muskets, not that great at the moment. Bison does go down there. Now starting to advance forward has an army of 45 here versus an army of 56. 
next age now available. He doesn't get... Uh, just got out a moss wagon there. And right now he's not properly reorganizing and engaging. He will lose a couple of villagers. But if he kills his army decisively, he'll be fine. Got some horns being tooted. Got javelin riders now pushed way forward. Flawny archers gains good damage there. His axe riders do go down. The flawny archers do get some great damage there on the bow riders. War Chief goes down as well. It looks like Blue's arm is just disintegrating. Axe Rider's not pulling a field, getting some good hits there onto the Fulani archers. Now shipment has been brought on in. Axe Rider's getting hit. Giras not pushing forward, tooting their horns. It looks like Blue's army has been cleaned on up. We've got an army of 34 here. And Blue does cast in GG. This is Anna Great saying, thank you for watching, and on to the next replay.